Welcome! All right! What's up, everybody? Grim Green, back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Vaporgate, right? Freaking Vaporgate. I, I love Vaporgate. I, I love Yosh from Vaporgate. And I haven't had, I don't know, a lot of success with their particular products. I really like that Dooley tank that they released. I wasn't a huge fan. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the Mason series of RDAs. They just, they, they just weren't a good fit for me. But what we have today is the Noble RDA. It's a real interesting RDA. It's got a real interesting deck on there, real interesting airflow as well. It has this weird sort of like top juice spatter protection thing going on in there. It's got a pretty fantastically smooth but restricted airflow as well. So I'm not going to put a fresh build in this uh, today, but I do want to go up close and show you the deck. So let's do a quick short up close time now. Go. All right, let's take a quick look at this The Noble RDA from Vaporgate. It's all broken down into its respective parts. You got the barrel of the RDA right here. This is the top cap, which has a little ultim thing in it. We're going to talk about that in a second. Don't you worry. And then you have the deck right here. And it's kind of an interesting deck. Postless deck design. Your leads just go straight into the sort of straight into the deck right there. There is a small space on either side for cotton. Just a small little cotton juice reservoir on the side. And you can kind of see the airflow right away. It's a little bit weird, right? It kind of comes through the middle. What the airflow does is it comes in through the bottom here, Kennedy style then straight up through the center and your coils are kind of sitting in these little airflow troughs right there. This is just the build I have in there now. It's some MTurk aliens and as you can see they're not quite sitting in there real well. They got a little bit jacked up the last time I pulled my cotton out so what I'm going to do is just straighten out these coils and then we're going to wick this bad boy. I should not have said bad boy there. It was either bad boy or bastard so you ended up with bad boy. My most sincere apologies and thank you for continuing to watch this video in spite of that joke. So you can kind of see where you want your coils to be and you definitely don't want your coils touching this center post in any capacity. It may not be something critical, it's not going to lead to like a full hard short or dead short, but it is going to cause you some hot spots in there. And hot spots are bad spots. Yeah, just like that. That's where you want your coil sitting. Just took a quick, tiny, tiny little adjustment, but as you can see, they're not touching the center on either side. They're kind of hovering right there in front of that big airflow opening. That, my friends, is where you want your coils to sit. These coils came right out at a 0.11. You can kind of see it there on the display, 0.11. So I've got them sitting at about 86 watts. They're glowing nice and evenly. And these are little uh, grub screws in here. You need a hex key and, or a, some people call it an Allen key or a hex key. I think you all know what the those are and they're in here and that's what you use to uh, you know tighten down your leads and thankfully thankfully it hits the leads at the right angle it's not hitting the leads from this direction it's hitting the leads from this direction so you can use a big wide coil like uh, you know a, a fralian or a framed staple or even an alien in there and it's gonna smash your leads perfectly and not cause any sort of like twisty weirdness to go on. I don't like it when, when screws make my coils go all twisty weirdness. All right, let's speed this up and I'm gonna wick it.
So real quick, here's that top cap that we were talking about that has that little Ultem insert in it, and that's to prevent spit back, right? And so then along the ridge here, you have a bunch of airflow holes that can, uh, you know, lead the vapor to your mouth, for lack of a better term. Um, the great thing about this little Ultem spit back guard thing is it's completely removable. You can kind of just boop pop it out like that and it just sits on an o-ring so if you don't want to have it if you want to attempt to blow your juice you can absolutely do it the little guard just pops right out but we're going to leave it in for now since we'll be popping and painting then you have the main barrel of the rda there's no top there's no bottom i've been using this as the bottom but it's machined the same diameter all the way around so you can put it down like this, or you can flip it over and put it down like this, doesn't really matter. And then it's, uh, you know, of course, 810 compatible on top. I will say all of the O-rings on this are super tight and super snappy. Um, some of them, like uh, honestly, all of them, bottom and top, need a little bit of lubrication in order to function properly. Dry O-rings on stainless steel is just never a good idea. Always, I mean, that's just a general life rule. Always use a little bit of lubrication. And then because your airflow is coming in the bottom, it doesn't really matter where you place this. So you can just pop that down. Boom, you got a fully built wicked and juice, the Noble RDA. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape this thing. So I know a lot of people are expecting this and my biggest gripe with this RDA is it's not really super conducive to blowing your juice through the top just because of the way that that airflow is. Like I said, the airflow is sitting there kind of right in the middle and then your coils are just outside of that. And when you blow your juice through the top, it does have the tendency to just hit that center airflow, go straight into the airflow holes and sometimes come out the bottom. The airflow is on the bottom here and yeah, when you're blowing your juice, it can get a little bit leaky sometimes. If you blow your juice and then instantly inhale, you'll, you'll suck some of that juice back out of there, but literally, I mean, 10 times out of 10, all I do is pop and paint. I pop the top off, I paint my coils, I put this back on. It doesn't bother me so much because of the way that this airflow is. You don't really have to pay attention to when you're putting your top cap back on. You don't have to like look and like reline up your airflow or anything. You just pop and paint and put this back on in any, you know, in any orientation and, and it'll be fine. It'll, it'll work great. You don't have to reline up your airflow. The airflow itself, like I said, it's smooth. It's not turbulent, it's not sharp, it's not spongy in any way. It's fairly smooth and it's a little bit restricted, which I also really enjoy. I like that little bit of resistance in my airflow. It's a very flavorful RDA and it's not overly loud. The airflow is not overly loud, which is something I really appreciate. It's 810 compatible on the top. It's 304 stainless steel all around, all throughout, and it's a 25 millimeter atomizer as well. Just something to keep in mind if you plan on using it on a, a mech mod, 25 millimeters. 25 millimeters doesn't matter so much on a lot of box mods, but on tube mechs, tube mechanical mods, it can kind of make, it can kind of make a big difference on there. Tasty, tasty, tasty vape. Overall, I do really like using this RDA. It's not like gonna be my favorite RDA of all time. It does kind of bum me out, like I already said, that blowing your juice through the middle can kind of lead to a little bit of leaking out of the airflow. I don't really have a super problem with uh, popping and painting my coils though. And really what's most important to me is if I'm getting a high quality vape from it. If I'm getting a high quality, satisfying vape from it and the the Noble RDA just delivers that to me in spades. Another thing to keep in mind is this is literally just a dripping RDA. It, it doesn't have a squonk pin. It doesn't have the ability to run on a squonker. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So let's get to the experience I get from this. Probably not, but that doesn't mean it's not a great atomizer. I just have a really long list of atomizers that are on my like must buy list. And that doesn't mean that the Noble wouldn't eventually come up in that list and I'd be like, all right, here we go. It's Noble time. It is a really fantastic atomizer. It's just not at the very, very top of my must buy list at the moment. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, it does come with both uh, a stainless steel barrel 
for the atomizer, as well as a very cool glass barrel for the atomizer. In fact, when I first got this, the Noble RDA, I was using the glass and I loved it. It was fantastic. It was easy to just pop it off, paint your coils, pop it back on the glass fit on there really well. All of the O-rings on this are really firm, really nice and snappy. The bummer part is I am quite clumsy and it lasted me uh, about two weeks before I broke the glass on it. I had to start using the stainless steel barrel on it and I, I, wish, I wish that I hadn't broken that glass just because it's very cool. It's very cool to see glass on an RDA. You don't see that a lot and I, I wanted to use it right away. Pfft, broke it, broke it. Anyway, yeah, it is what it is. It's the Noble RDA, available from Vaporgate.com. Unfortunately, like I always say, YouTube really dislikes links to external vape shops in the description, so you'll have to use your Google Foo or just head over to Vaporgate.com. Check out what they got over there. As always, thank you so much for watching, and yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>